it's time for another album ranking. Manila Road provided us with 40 years of music, a lot to talk about. And I'm glad to have a lady with me for the album cover presentation again. Hello, my name is Kira. Circus Maximus was intended to be a side project, not a Manila Road album, and thus it's understandable why it doesn't fit well to the rest. Three guys are contributing their songs. The modern metal ideas of Aaron Brown are absolutely terrible. I like some of the more mainstream rock-influenced tunes written by Andrew Koss. Mark Shelton contributed three songs which are a bit more easygoing than most Manila Road stuff. Not bad, but only a completist needs this album. The first album by Manila Road, recorded in winter 1979, is still stuck knee-deep in the 70s. The intro to Far Side of the Sun, with its spoken words and space noises, sounds like Hawkwind on their space ritual. In Centurion War Games and The Empire, future subjects cast their shadows before. Far Side of the Sun, by the way, is based on the sci-fi movie Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, about a planet that's a mirror image of Earth. It's actually well worth watching. The last Sudri album of the band. I would love to praise it as Manila Road's swan song, but honestly it didn't impress me so much. It's a mature and thoughtful album, though, if you read the lyrics for Never Again or In the Wake, for instance. Between Invasion and Metal, Dreams of Eschaton, as the band's actual second album, remained unreleased in the 80s. There was nothing wrong with it, but Mark wanted to move away from the psychedelic stuff towards more metal ingredients, which paved the way for Crystal Logic in the end. In 2002, this missing link was first put out as Mark of the Beast on CD, but 2016, a remastered version found its way on vinyl, with correct running order, new cover, better quality and the original title. I'm glad the picture of the early works of the band is now complete. I like Time Trap and the final song Triumvirate most of all. Playground of the Damned is one of the more accessible albums of the band. My favorite songs are the dark Grindhouse and the melancholic Art of War, but altogether it won't make my top 10. Out of the Abyss shows a band who doesn't want to be labelled as 70s throwbacks. This is as brutal as a song title like Slaughterhouse indicates. However, I must say I enjoy the slowdowns like Return of the Old Ones most of all, since they develop more atmosphere. <laughs> From the Grey God Passes about Norse mythology to Mysterium about the disappearance of an expedition in Australia, Mark Shelton found fascinating subjects again to write songs about. I like the ballad The Fountain and the dark title track. The album also has a few weaker tunes like Do What Thou Will, but it's alright. Although Manila Road were formed in the 70s, they were not a band who sounded strictly old-fashioned. Spiral Castle, like Out of the Abyss or Circus Maximus, tried to use new influences. Some succeed and some less, in my opinion. Throne of Lies is an awkward attempt at modern thrash which feels out of place to me. Honestly, if you play the aggressive Throne of Lies and the chilling Sands of Time to someone, he'll swear it can't be the same band, let alone tracks from the same album. Merchants of Death is a totally different beast again. Kicks off with some almost death metal growls before going all the way back to 70s prog rock with its melodies and structures. It's an amazing song. 
Spiral Castle might be the most experimental album of the band, quite a surprise after Atlantis Rising, which had been a more traditional slice of epic metal. Released in 2015, The Blessed Curse is my favorite from the last decade of the band's activity. Tomes of Clay is one of those epics you get immersed by, with hauntingly beautiful guitars giving it an oriental touch in that case. The Blessed Curse has stronger melodies than Playground of the Damned, and more coherence than Mysterium, so it definitely beats those two previous albums. After Invasion and the unreleased Dreams of Eschaton, Manila Road made a step from psychedelic towards metal in the album entitled Metal, in case somebody didn't notice. Queen of the Black Coast is a classic of the epic metal genre. Far Side of the Sun is included again in a straighter version without the space intro. And another favorite track of mine is Cage of Mirrors, which shows an excellent balance between heavy and subtle. <laughs> This concept album was a bit closer to perfection than others. Probably Manila Road had more time to work on it. The story tells us about a bunch of Vikings who are asked to stop their lifestyle of rape, steal and plunder, so they bugger off to rape, steal and plunder somewhere else. Greenland, Vinland, eventually Mexico. From the deep growls of Blood Eagle to the acoustic guitars in Eye of the Storm, there's a lot of musical suspense. For nearly a decade it looked like this would be the last true Manila Road album, followed by the ill-fated Circus Maximus project and a split of the band in the 90s. I played it more often than others, maybe for its variety. In tunes like DOA, keyboards moved into the foreground, while the previous thrash period of the band is still continued in aggressive tunes like From Beyond. <laughs> A compilation of three concept stories divided in three songs each. First, The Frost Giant's Daughter by Robert E. Howard was put into music. I love the book, it. this is a great adaption, especially behind the veil is a magic moment. Then we get The Escape from Troy and finally The Battle of the Spartans. <laughs> After a decade of silence, Manila Road came back with his fine offering, opening the gates to an unexpected second half of their career. Who would have thought in the 90s that Manila Road would return to create nine more albums? Atlantis Rising has everything you'd expect from them. The storytelling, the mysticism, the epic feel, the guitar frenzy. It would serve as a good introduction for the second generation of fans too. The Deluge is no immediate hit like Necropolis on Crystal Logic. It takes several spins to develop, but then becomes a fascinating record with almost possessed intensity. My favorite tracks are Shadows in the Black and Eye of the Dead. This is the Crossroads album between early Manila Road and the epic fantasy band we all know. Here they were perfecting their style. In between the dark epic numbers like Necropolis or Crystal Logic, the happy little tune Feeling Free Again seems strangely out of place, but otherwise it's a classic. <laughs> Chris Logic opened the gates and the deluge might be considered as a kind of trilogy, the Manila Road fantasy classics of the 80s. Mystification, however, opened up a new chapter for the band, gothic horror based on Edgar Allan Poe stories like Mask of the Red Death. Tunes like Children of the Night and Death by the Hammer were demonstrating how heavy the music of the band could be. 
great album. This was the first Manila Road album I ever bought, sometime in the late 80s. I found it in a second-hand shop, which means the previous owner must have thought he would live without it. What a tragic mistake. Open the Gates has everything you could expect from a Manila Road album. Weavers of the Web has the driving groove. The Fires of Mars boasts with a lot of epic feel. Heavy Metal to the World is an anthem to raise your fist and bang your head. The Ninth Wave dwells in that otherworldly weirdness. Then you get Witch's Brew and Hour of the Dragon. It's just a magic album. Thanks for listening and keep the memory of the band alive. <laughs>